So the, um, the inner critic is something that I personally have dealt with for many, many years. Actually, as far back as I can remember, I've always had one. Um, and this inner critic is very good at stopping you from uh, achieving things in your mind. And, you know, I always wondered, how is it that I, how is it that this thing knows exactly how to betray me? It knows exactly what to say. It knows exactly what future scenarios I should conjure up to frighten me. It knows exactly things from my past to stop me, to tell me I'm not enough to become what I want to be. Um, how is it that it knows this so perfectly well? And, well, the obvious truth is that the inner critic's me. Um, I am the inner critic. And it's through my um, unwillingness to be responsible for it, for everything within myself, that I don't change it or I didn't at the time. Um, I couldn't see how this could be a part of me as I, why would I, why would I sabotage myself? Why would I treat myself this way? Well, on some level I was taught to do that and on some other level I didn't recognize that it was me doing it. I blamed it on something else. See, if you don't take responsibility for you being the inner critic, um, you're going to blame someone else for it. But you're not looking for blame because blame doesn't get rid of it. Um, you're looking for the cause. The cause is what you're always seeking because the cause, if you can find the cause of it, then you can get rid of it. But the cause is always you. And that's where it becomes difficult sometimes to accept that maybe I am the inner critic. I am the one sabotaging me. I am the one stopping me. But you wouldn't want it any other way. And, um, you know, there's this uh, story that Neville gave where he, he saw a... Um, a person in his, or he saw these two beings inside himself, and one of the beings was this monster, it was this monster of a being, and this other one was very, very beautiful, and the one beautiful being was everything he, all his noble thoughts, uh, personified, and then the uh, monstrous being was all the ignoble, tho uh, ignoble thoughts that he had, um, and he said that this other being loved violence. This horrible being spoke violence. It always just fed on it, and it grew from violence. And he pummeled it and pummeled it, and it just kept growing. And then he decided to say, you know what, I'm going to redeem you if it takes me eternity. So he redeems it. And then he said he felt like he had a power that, you know, that was all his misspent energy came back to him. He felt like he had power again. Now, from my own experience, I've had a very, very similar dream where I was, um, I found myself fighting this m mummy looking monster. And no matter what I did, if I punched it, my arms would go through it. If I shot at it with a gun, the bullets wouldn't work. Uh, no, no matter what I did, it, it would just wouldn't, I, there's just nothing I could do. And I felt like I was getting frustrated because I couldn't defeat this thing. But it wasn't until I stopped fighting entirely in the dream and I just started to feel unafraid. I stared at it and I stopped feeling afraid of it. And the next thing I know, it got smaller. And then I stopped feeling more afraid and it got smaller and then more unafraid and it got smaller and smaller and smaller. The next thing I know, I felt fearless and it was gone. It just disappeared. My attention wasn't placed upon it and I wasn't placed upon fear anymore. And there's this um, common theme in ancient myth that when something is burned up or something is lit on fire, it usually means that your the attention is taken away from it. When you take your attention away from something, it burns up and withers. And um, actually in the story of Hercules, when he fights the Hydra, the Hydra is a very, very good symbol for fear. Um, you chop one head off and another one comes and that's very similar to how we live our lives that maybe one day you tackle one fear today but tomorrow there's another fear coming that you got to fight against and it feels never ending there's some some days there's more fears than you felt like you tackled one fear and the next day there's five more fears and you're not understanding why is it that i can't defeat this thing and hercules thought the same thing but he uses fire actually to destroy it and fire is that he, you know, he chops the necks off and burns them. And again, fire is taking your attention away from it. 
See, it's not the thoughts or the heads that, you're, that are important to fight. It's the body, where it's coming from, where the heads are growing from. And these thoughts that you're fighting against are actually coming from the feeling of fear. You see, if you don't live in love, you will be subdued by fear, as Neville, as, I'm sorry, as William Blake says. And um, that is such an important statement, that if you don't fully um, think thoughts that you love to think about, you will be subdued by fear. Eventually, you'll go to fear. It's one or the other. So you stop fighting these thoughts. Stop fighting them and go to the feeling. and Stop feeling afraid. And, you know, I fought this mummy thing. and It's the same thing as the Hydra. It's the same idea that I would punch it. My arms would go through it. You chop one head off, two grow. It's the same concept. But I got rid of it not by fighting, but through becoming unafraid. Taking my attention away from fear. And, um... The inner critic, you know, it knows exactly what to do to stop you because it is you. It's very important that you take responsibility for this because if you take responsibility, um, that's power in imagination. Responsibility is power in imagination. Um, things cannot harm you unless you allow it. And yes, you are that powerful to create this inner critic in you. Maybe at one point it was useful, but now it's not. Life's a lot better without living um, with this thorn in your mind and um, I know from my own experience how terrible this inner critic can become and how it can lead you to dark roads um, but again it's just yourself leading yourself there and the next time you know you can test this that you can see it's yourself is if next time you assume uh, being something you want in your mind, something great. Assume something really outlandish in your mind. Be a little crazy about it. And when the inner critic comes to tell you about how you're not this and how you can't be that or some fearful thing in the future, tell yourself, instead of viewing it as something separate from you, say, I'm not going to sabotage myself. And then you will see that it's you who's doing it all along. It's not this thing that's separate from you. And to be honest, your assumptions are so powerful in imagination that you could assume there is no inner critic. Assume there is no inner critic. Don't allow, don't allow yourself to hear anything but that. You know, practice uh, hearing yourself fulfilling desires within you. Like say, I am beautiful. And don't allow yourself to hear anything else but that. And... Um, if you can l practice restricting the urge to hear anything but your desire being fulfilled, it will become easier over time. You won't need to sit down and meditate for 20 minutes, an hour. You can be do it, you could do it while you're walking somewhere. You can totally detach from your present reality and assume something about yourself and then live in that assumption. And there is no inner critic to stop you because it's just yourself. You know, it's, you, once, once you realize that you don't need to be afraid of the inner critic because it is you, you will feel so much power that you never felt before. I mean, for me at least, because I grew up with the inner critic in my head, so um, for me it was like infinite power. I felt like I could do anything. And um, persist in that. Don't allow yourself to go back and listen to the, your inner critic's voice because it's just you. Um, and I say that because uh, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not speaking from... Um, a theory. I'm not theorizing to you, telling you um, this is what I think it's like. No, I'm telling you from experience that when you remove the inner critic entirely, assume there isn't one. <laughs> assume there are no Satans, no demons, no evil in your mind. Uh, make it into a heaven. Make your imagination into heaven. Assume there is no inner critic. Because uh, it's just you in the end. Um, the amount of freedom you feel within your mind is, it's, it's, um, I don't know how to put it into words. It's a euphoria. It's like a, a powerful euphoria. Like a euphoria where you're in control. It's the best way I can explain it. And you don't have to live in desire in your mind. You don't have to desire the inner critic to be gone. Stop desiring and get rid of it. It's just you. You can just assume there isn't one. It's a simple way of doing it. Or you can just take responsibility for it being you and realize that I'm the only one stopping me. The inner critic's not separate. It's me. And that can give you some confidence. Whichever way you go about it, um, I want you to come back to being the cause of it. I repeat myself over and over in my videos, and uh, I'm going to keep repeating myself all the time because it's necessary. 
Because all it takes is one repetition for someone to hear. In a certain, a certain way, it just needs a, a certain string of words. For some reason, in this one fashion, can make someone, it can finally click in their mind. And they can see what I'm talking about. And uh, you might need to re-listen to my videos over and over again to finally have that click. Sometimes it's, it is the same sentence, but it's just you need to hear it again and again for it to finally understand what I'm saying. And um, I'm willing to repeat it because I know it's true. And um, I'm not teaching you knowledge. This is a type of wisdom that this would be true regardless if you, whatever time period you lived in, you, you are the inner critic regardless if you're in the year 4000 or 2022. It doesn't matter. So I, I'm trying to, uh, I'm not teaching you knowledge. This is wisdom. And um, this is what I've learned over the time of practicing these teachings. And it is a practice. You have to do this daily. Daily learn to say what you want to say and hear nothing but what you said. That, you know, have a desire, you know, have someone tell you that you are wonderful and allow it to feel as if you heard it externally. As if someone told you, someone walked up to you today and said, hey, you're beautiful. Hear that in imagination and, and feel as if there's no difference to you. Respond to it as if there's no difference. And you'll start to live in your imagination. You realize that the inner critic has always just been there. And it's been, uh, maybe it was a protective, um, it was protective at one point, but now it's destructive. And now it's time to move on. And to, maybe you are desiring to get rid of it, but you're not sure how. Well, use the law of assumption. Assume there is no inner critic. Remember, this is your imagination where you get to make it into heaven. And uh, again, I'm repeating myself because it does take several times to hear uh, for it to finally click. And um, you can like you can go about these ways in a, and through assumption, or you can also go about them through responsibility, which is I am the inner critic, so I do not need to fear. I am my own worst enemy because I know exactly how to sabotage myself. And I won't do that anymore. That's an assumption. You can do that. You can also say there is no inner critic. You know, there is no evil in my mind. I only see the good in myself and in others. Up to you how you want to shape your perception, but it's up to you. Truly, it's up to you. And I hope you do take this responsibility because you will become more and more free um, when you realize it's all you at the end of the day in your mind. You take full responsibility for everything. And you live life from this new responsibility that you are in control. You know, maybe you're desiring to have some control in your mind. Assume you have it. Don't live in desire anymore about anything. You don't need to in imagination. The version of yourself that is in control in your mind, you are already that. Just become aware of already being it. You don't have to become things in the mind. You already are things. They are already finished. All it takes is your awareness or your moving your state of consciousness that you're currently in and moving it into that state of consciousness. It's already finished. There's In imagination, things already are. There, there's nothing created here. It already is. And what you must do is credit it with reality because you are the life. Your life in front of you is actually dead and it's only responding to you. You are the life. I am is the life. And I am is the only reality. So you take a scene that might feel fake to you at first, but credit it with reality. Maybe it's a wonderful scene and you it's something, some wish you have. Credit it with reality inside your mind. Don't listen to anything else but this scene. And you'll find that the inner critic has, is just that you, it's just you at the, end, at the end of the day. It's always just been you. But if you want to um, have some practical, um, if you want, I guess if you want something that's practical, I guess before you go to sleep every night, fall asleep feeling present tensely what you want it doesn't matter what it is it could be something small that you've wanted since you're a child i don't care what it is but feel as though you have it now and don't allow yourself to hear anything no fears from the future and no shame from the past or stagnation from the past be there in the present of being it now and the inner critic will slowly vanish away and you find yourself stopping yourself Say, I don't need to stop myself. I'm allowed to feel this as much as I want. It's my own imagination. I can shape it to however I want. And you allow yourself. Really, truly allow it. Allow yourself to walk in your imagination how you want to walk. Hear what you want to hear. Say what you want to say. Be respected. You know, at one point, I, I, I grew up totally being disrespected growing up. And I I was never listened to. Um at all 
<laughs> and um, nothing I said was really taken seriously. And now I have people listening to me. I assumed I was a great teacher. I went to sleep feeling I'm a great teacher. Why would I assume I'm a bad one? I want to assume I'm a good one. So I fell asleep not as though I'm going to become a good teacher. I, I assumed what I already am. I became aware of what I already am. These are a part of myself. These things are a part of me. So I don't reject them anymore. I accept them. There's a part of me that could be a very bad teacher. There's a part of me that could be a very good one. And it's up to me to decide which ones I want to be. It's my choice within myself. So um, you don't have to ever feel stuck in imagination. You can always assume, um, even if the inner critic's making you feel so stuck, assume there isn't one and feel that huge relief that it's gone. And don't allow yourself to hear anything else but that. You can start there and you'll see what I'm trying to say to you that you can make imagination into a heaven.